I watched a good interview with uh, Quentin Tarantino recently. He was talking about how, you know, people are always uh, coming up to him and, and raving about how Reservoir Dogs was, you know, such an amazing first film and uh, just, you know, how, how he made such a, his very first effort was such a great film. And, uh, and I happened, you know, of course, I happen to think Reservoir Dogs is an excellent film. But the point that he made was this, that Reservoir Dogs was not his first attempt right out of the gate, you know, uh, that he'd been, first of all, he says, you know, he'd been struggling for eight years, basically, to get that film, or to get a film made, and that, you know, of course, there was an earlier film that he made that nobody saw at the time, I think it's only recently kind of started to surface on YouTube, called My Best Friend's Birthday, which was a, uh, an early attempt that he made at a self-funded feature film, and, uh, I, I won't get into the whole details behind that production here. It's been it's been detailed in a lot of different videos on YouTube. But the the point is that he uh, struggled for several years to get this film made, and there were you know accidents at the lab, and you know he ended up with uh, only being able to salvage a certain amount of the footage that he shot. But as he says, you know it was a great learning experience, and uh, and the, the the point that he was making in this interview. And I've heard a lot of other directors, you know, I'm talking about even um, major Hollywood filmmakers say this, that there's this idea that a director emerges fully formed with his or her first feature film. But what's so often meant by that is it's the first feature film that the public sees, the first feature film by that director that gets a commercial theatrical release. And the reality of it is that that almost never happens. Um, it, it would be very hard for me to think of any director that I am aware of who had that kind of, um, you know, instant success right out of the gate with their very, very first project. Think about Steven Spielberg. He made a lot of, um, you know, eight millimeter short films as a, as a teenager. Uh, he even made a feature length project on eight millimeter that he was going to shop around as a kind of calling card to try to get, uh, you know, try to break into working with the studios. Uh, Martin Scorsese, you know, before he made, um, even, you know, before he made his first feature, Who's That Knocking at My Door? He made, you know, a number of short films in film school. Uh, you know, th there are all sorts of examples. We can go back and Alfred Hitchcock, you know, even before he made his first thriller as he was working, doing, uh, you know, studio assignments where he was really kind of learning the craft of filmmaking as they went along. and So the, the point is that there's kind of this myth that a director emerges fully formed at the top of their game with their first breakout hit. And what you don't see are all of the attempts before that to learn the craft of filmmaking, to uh, perfect their style, and all of the, basically all of the work and all of the... Uh, in, in some cases, all of the failures that can go in to working up to that point where you have that first big breakout hit. I, I do think it's important to keep this in mind if you're a uh, if you're a beginning filmmaker, for example, because it might be easy to get discouraged if you make your very first film and you look at it and you think, uh, "Well, this isn't really very good. You know, this isn't uh, uh, you know what I was expecting." Well, that's that's perfectly fine. You know, I doubt that Hitchcock's first film or Spielberg's first film or Tarantino's first film was exactly what he was expecting. You know, that's the point, that it's uh, every project represents a learning experience. And unless you are someone in a position uh, where you have a, uh, you know, a studio releasing your film and putting a lot of um, uh, publicity and marketing behind it as your first feature, uh, when in reality it may not be your first film at all, um, you know, the reality is that everybody has these early projects that you learn from. And I think it's fine to be dissatisfied in the sense of wanting to do better. I think that's fine. But on the other hand, if you're, you can't let it discourage you. You see the difference? Like, it's fine to look at it and say, all right, what can I do better? But don't lose sight of the fact that you still made a movie. You know, you've done what uh, the vast majority of people who talk about wanting to make a movie will never do. You actually saw it through to completion. You have a finished result that you can put your name on and be proud of. 
And so even if you look at your very first project, or even if it's your second or third or fourth or fifth, it's, it's fine to be dissatisfied with certain things. It's fine to be critical of certain things, but don't sell yourself short. Don't tell yourself that it's uh, a failure or anything like that, because the, just by virtue of having made it, you've already given yourself that experience and you've already uh, learned something. And that's the most important thing you can do with every project is to learn something. Um, and, you know, and, and again, like if you want to, if you, if you, if you want to compare this to major established filmmakers that are out there, I mean, think about the filmographies of even directors like Spielberg or Hitchcock. There are minor films, lesser films in all of their filmographies. I think we can, you know, probably agree that not every single film is as successful as the very best work. So even at that level, there's, there, there might be a sense of, you know, stepping back after a project and thinking about, well, this one may not have worked as well as, you know, this other one, and you get the idea. I'm not trying to compare everything to Hollywood here. My point is just that if it sometimes is easy to get discouraged because of the, uh, the, the, the myths about movie making that get kind of passed down and imposed on us by Hollywood. And I think sometimes it's a good idea to just step back and look at it, you know, look at it critically, look at it uh, skeptically and think about, okay, but what's really, you know, what is the reality here versus what does, what is the, uh, the myth? And I think once you can do that, and once you realize that every film represents a learning experience, every film represents a, uh, an opportunity to uh, think about what you can do differently next time or do better next time or however you want to put it, um, hopefully that will help to alleviate some of that discouragement that, that you might feel or some of the doubt that you might feel upon looking at your own films. And... Uh, you know, there's, there, like I said, there's really no reason to, to think negatively about the fact that at the end of the day, you were able to make a film, you have something you created that you can put your name on, and that really is what it's all about. So, all of this is just a way of saying that, you know, if you're just starting out making films, or even if, even if you've been making films uh, for, you know, 28 years, like I have, the, the thing is that you... You can always uh, learn from it and just keep in mind that uh, it's not worth getting discouraged over because, uh, you know, every, every new film represents a chance to do something different. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will talk to you later.